Hello, Mark Crossfield here. I am today going to talk to you a little bit about shop shaping. So we've got Bubba just winning the Masters, who obviously shapes his shots. People are talking about quite aggressively, moves the ball in the air to try and hit target. Lots of videos flying around online now, Bubba's one. Here's another one going to fly around online around shaping your shots. So I'm going to just share with you a few of my thoughts about how, how I shape shots and then a little bit about how I think lots of you out there are trying to shape your shots and possibly getting it wrong. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, I've got my driver in my hand, I've got GC2 HMT on the floor, I've got my driver marked up. I've got a target line here, which is the yellow line. That's where the ball is headed or, or going to end up in the distance. That's my distance target. Um, I've captured some data earlier using real balls with GC2 HMT here. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you what that uh, data was captured around first and talk to you a little bit about how maybe you're getting it slightly wrong along with unfortunately lots of other people when it comes to trying to shape your golf shots. Um, look, I'm just going to hit a few shots just to show you what data I collected. first couple of shots I think I collected was just hitting my normal drive. Now when I hit a normal drive I'm very neutral with my angles. I hit quite a straight ball. I can draw it and fade it a little amount subject to how I see it but I'm just going to try and hit a relatively straight one here. So going all up the line of this yellow stick bang there that's pretty straight fraction left but pretty straight so that's my normal swing now I know my normal swing is quite zeroed out so I know my paths are relatively straight the club as it hits the ball is traveling near zero okay now I'm gonna hit a fade so what I'm gonna do to hit a fade is I'm gonna aim face of my club left so almost towards the blue stake in the distance and my feet parallel to my face line so aiming all the long way left so it's about 30 yards left of my actual target and as I take my grip I'm just going to turn the face so it's slightly open to my grip and open to my new leftward feet line now it's not open to this yellow line though it's closed it's pointing left of this yellow line but it's open to my aiming my feet and that blue stake so my face is now pointing somewhere between the white marker and the blue stake in the distance and then I'm going to swing when I go back to kind of lining myself up to hit this shot I'm looking at my feet line that's where I feel like I'm going to swing and that's where my kind of all my movements are moving towards it's just a face that address is slightly contradicting that and now I try and hit my fade and there it goes that's moving to the right onto target nicely and now I'm going to hit my draw, so I'm going to hit just my normal, trying to turn it the other way, maybe slightly heavier than I would standard. So I'm going to aim now, there's a blue stake to the right of the white pole. I'm aiming the face of my feet to the right. I'm going to take my grip just by again turning that face in, which feels kind of two-ish degrees to my feet line. Face now is pointing right of this yellow stick, but it's left of my feet line again as I kind of waggle get ready to hit the ball here I'm looking down at my feet that's the line I feel like I'm going to swing the club on I'm going to ignore the face and where it's pointing and just swing and there's my draw it's coming back nicely now I'm going to do two other swings and this is the one I get a lot in lessons and I'm also seeing it on videos so I'm going to do a low draw so how I would have hit a draw when I was a kid, almost how I was taught to hit a draw, and I think how lots of people still think you hit a draw. So I'd have to take kind of same setup ideas, but I'm now going to swing more around my body, which I feel quite flat and around to try and feel like I'm hitting more this way at the ball to give it more turn. So I'm going to hit a low draw. So as in not the ball low, my feeling of my swing is low. Okay, and now I'm going to hit what I used to do to try and fade the ball, which is a high fade, which again, I saw someone talking about this on a video the other day. I'm going to aim left, same ideas with the grip and the setup of the face, but I'm now going to take the club up high to cut the ball because it needs to be coming from out to in. And to do that, people feel they need to go higher to do that. So I'm now going to do my high fade. And that ball's cutting pretty much the same amount as the last one towards that target. So there's a few different ways of swinging. 
now let's look, I've captured data, like I say, using GC2 HMT um, on the club here. I've got the markers on the face of my driver. Let's show you what those kind of swings do to the path and to the shape of the ball. Show you how much it actually really is moving it. All right, guys, so let's look at some of the captured data. And I think this will be quite interesting for lots of you. If you look at the first two shots here, this is me trying to hit my straight shot. And you can see club path here is kind of averaging 0.2 degrees straight, which is where I am. Club face is averaging one open to that 0.2 to the right. So a slight push to straight drives, which is pretty much what I hit. Now, if we go to my fade swing, what we're going to notice is the path has gone to a minus 8.6. So the path of the club, that club is traveling 8.6 degrees to the left as it strikes the ball so let's say it's traveling a long green stick here 8.6 degrees that's not 8.6 degrees let's just pretend it is for this uh, discussion of the video give it more of a visual kind of uh, slightly bigger angle so you can really see it now my face is averaging 4.6 open to that 8.6 that means my face is halfway between almost the green stick and the yellow stick, remember the yellow stick is target line. So my ball is starting on that orange stick and it's moving away from this green stick, which is where it's cutting back to the target. That's my normal swing. I don't feel like I'm going higher or lower. I'm just making that setup change, slight change in the club face in relationship to where my green line on the floor here is, if you like, and then just swinging the same one I would feel when people call plane whatever plane is. I'm not feeling like I go higher or lower around here. I'm just doing the same kind of ideas as the swings. And that promotes a fade shot. You can see the numbers there, the face four open to a path which is eight left. That's going to create a pretty functional fade onto target. If we look at my draw numbers, my path goes uh, six to the right. So my path goes six that way. And then my face is two left of that, 1.9 to two left of that. So again, the ball is traveling along the orange stick to set off and then away from the greens so are turning back to target. A pretty functional draw again. I'm not feeling like I'm swinging more round. I'm just swinging on my same, what I feel plain. I'm swinging on my same in my head, feel-wise angles. I'm not doing more of this and more of this. I'm just turning this hoop in relationship to that yellow line in setup and keeping it the same as it swings around my body in my head. Now, if we look at the low draw, this is the interesting one, the low draw. What happens with the low draw is the path is 8.5 to the right. So it only went two degrees more right than my standard draw swing by just moving myself around to the yellow line. Two degrees. And if you look on the video, you can see it's a massive difference in what people could call plane, vertical swing plane. So all I'm actually doing in the low draws is I'm not moving the pencil here much, only two degrees, minuscule. I'm actually just lowering or raising the hoop. And what you can see here from this and this is the key, if I lower and raise that hoop, that pencil, so club path, the pencil is club path, is not really moving. All I'm doing is swinging it around my body more. I'm not actually changing the path of the club at all. Um, and that's one of the common misconceptions. People think they have to swing around their body to draw it and up to fade it. You absolutely do not. What you probably find you're actually changing more like I say, is how you deliver that club on the floor, so more vertical swing plane kind of numbers, to how the club is being towed up or towed down as it hits the ground, rather than changing path. So if we go low draw again, it's eight degrees to the right face, too close to that, similar numbers, similar draw numbers. Now my lie, so the lie of the club, how the club is towing up or straight as it hits the ground, and this is a driver, so it should never be flat on the floor in the lie numbers on GC2 HMT, um, is almost 10 degrees towed up, opposed to my normal draw, it's 8.6. So it's two degrees difference in how I'm delivering that club. So I'm actually moving, in effect, in simple terms, that hoop lower when I hit my rounded draw, so my swinging around my body and a little high, but I'm barely moving path, hardly at all which is what I see in lessons a lot from people saying, trying to draw it and they're swinging around their body, but their path is still outside. I can still swing around my body. The yellow sticks uh, path can swing very flat, but still from the outside and equally from the inside, it's not particularly gonna affect it. Now, if we go to the high fade, which is called fade up here, club path nine left, where my normal fade was 8.6. So again, massive difference in the height I went to not really move the path kind of less than a degree. Um, face was four open to that nine. When I hit my fade, it was four open as well. So it's almost exact same numbers from very different height. Again, the hoop, 
taller swinging left or flatter swinging left makes no difference. It's the fact that I know my pencil is swinging left from that setup change is what's doing it more than anything else. The biggest difference lies 6.4 toed up when I hit my normal fade, it's 9.5 toed up. So big difference in the tall one in how I'm delivering the club on the floor this way or this way. Uh, so I'm changing the lie more than I am actually changing the path. Now changing the lie can affect spins as well. So that's lots of manufacturers use these necks and you can have the face the club flatter or more upright and it can uh, affect spins to a degree as well. But it's you don't really want to be playing with that when you're trying to control path because if you're trying to move the ball through the air, Bubba style, you need to be able to do what he can do, which is control path, but also control face to path as well. If you can control those two things, then you'll be able to shape the ball like I can. I can control those things in setup and then just keep my normal swing. I do not need to feel like lots of people are saying, like you have to go up to fade it and around to draw it. Absolutely do not. You need to be able to control path. Obviously this is easier for me because I've got a straightish path to start off. The main thing from this, which I'd like you to take away from, is more that kind of slightly heightened understanding on what is influencing path rather than having those old traditional thinking of going up or around to influence path. And the best way for you to test this on how you influence it, like I say in lots of videos, get on GC2 HMT, get measured, see where your path is, and then play with moving it. So swinging around your body isn't gonna move anything apart from move maybe vertical swing plane a little bit, and then you've got a whole new dimension that you've got to try and control, which is gonna make golf pretty hard. Thanks for watching guys, post comments down below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say on this one. It's slightly different. Be interested to know your thoughts and we'll speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.